In this video, we will discuss about how none other than Elon Musk is going after the shorts. He's also going after certain law firms and even the corrupt regulators. He's putting together a team of lawyers inside Tesla to close them down. I think this could be the mainstream exposure that we need to force the shorts to close out their positions. Hey, welcome to AMC Daily. If you are new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on post notifications by hitting the bell so you never miss any of our uploads and also enter our giveaway. But everyone remember this is not a financial advice video. So Unchul Wales is tweeted saying breaking news. Elon Musk has said that Tesla will go after the Wall Street short sellers, certain law firms, and even sometimes the corrupt regulators who are the true evil. It was announced that Tesla was building a legal team. They added Brandon Earhart, who joined the company as it continues to build the hardcore litigation department that was announced by Elon Musk last year. Musk said in a tweet that he was building a litigation team to initiate and execute lawsuits and report directly to him. And he said the team will commit to never surrendering or settling an unjust case against us, even if they'll probably lose. This goes to show that Elon Musk is really determined to get back at those short sellers and those regulators that held Tesla down for so long. Without those short sellers crushing the company, Elon Musk and Tesla could have already accomplished what they set out to do right now, say five years ago, or maybe even before. But because Tesla was held down for so long, and the SEC even tried to shut down Tesla numerous times, Elon Musk has struggled. Yes, he's come out on top now, but he was obviously held back for such a long time. Elon Musk in an interview said, I was told by the banks that if I did not agree to settle with the SEC, that the banks would cease providing working capital and Tesla would go bankrupt immediately. So that's like having a gun to your child's head. So I was forced to concede to the SEC unlawfully, those bastards. And now it makes it look like I lied when I did not in fact lying. I was forced to admit that I lied to save Tesla's life, and that's the only reason. So that goes to show that even though the SEC knew they were wrong, and they knew that Elon Musk had actually done nothing wrong, they still managed to get Elon Musk to succeed because they threatened taking away his financing. Obviously, the SEC controls the banks. The banks and the SEC are controlled by these hedge funds, and therefore, they have free reign on exactly what they wanted to do with Tesla and Elon Musk. They forced him to concede to the SEC and admit wrongdoing, even though he knows he did nothing wrong, and it makes his own image look bad, as it makes it look like he lied when in fact he didn't. And Ricky has said that actually, this may be the exact same thing that's happening with AMC as well. Adam Aaron may have tons of proof of synthetic shorts and know exactly how to squeeze them, but he's being forced by the SEC and by these hedge funds and by these banks not to expose the truth or they'll withdraw their loans. As AMC is currently not yet profitable and is still largely funded by debt, if Adam Aran does anything wrong, they can take away those loans overnight. If it can happen to Elon Musk, it can definitely happen to AMC as well as we know full well that hedge funds and the institutions and the SEC hate AMC even more than they hate Tesla. And this may be the exact reason as to why Adam Aaron hasn't come forward with the proof of synthetic shorting. Because he knows that if he does, AMC will be bankrupt overnight. And obviously, if AMC goes bankrupt, we don't get our squeeze, and he doesn't get his squeeze either, turning him into a billionaire. Therefore, for the moment, He's waiting until AMC is profitable, waiting until that debt is paid down, and then he can expose everything and anything. If Adam Aran uses the cash from the APE conversion to pay down AMC's debt, and if AMC turns profitable next quarter, Adam Aran can do whatever he likes. He'll no longer be controlled by the banks and no longer be controlled by the corrupt SEC, and he can expose and tell whatever he wants to whoever he wants. It wouldn't surprise me if Adam Aaron even wanted to work with Elon Musk and this law team to go after the corrupt short sellers and the corrupt SEC. Aaron tweeted saying that FINRA has just issued a $3 million fine to Goldman Sachs for marking 60 million short positions as long. 
It says that Goldman mismarked as long approximately 60 million short sale orders, totaling more than 14 billion shares, and nearly 8 million of those orders, totaling more than a billion shares, were actually trades that were executed and short positions were actually taken and profits were actually made. And due to the inaccurate long mark, 12,335 of the executed orders were executed at or below the national best bid while a short sale circuit breaker was in effect. So Goldman Sachs profited from at least 1 billion shares. Even if they generated only a single dollar per share, that's still a billion dollars of profit, and they only suffered a $3 million fine. It really goes to show just how small the speed bump really is for these short sellers under the reign of Favainari and the SEC, who are undoubtedly corrupt. But something interesting tweeted by suspended POS is that if there's anyone that knows they're about to get vaporized soon, it's Robin Hood. You may have seen this email from Robin Hood about the updated customer agreement. It says, we made additional changes to the customer agreement governing your Robin Hood brokerage account. And they said, we're changing the transaction limits that apply to originated ACH withdrawals and deposits made via your brokerage. Basically, yet another firm is restricting those withdrawals and restricting deposits as well. And on top of restricting the value of those withdrawals, they've also added a daily frequency limit for certain types of transactions, limiting them to five per day across all of your Robinhood accounts. Basically saying, if AMC does indeed squeeze, you can only withdraw that money in small chunks and at a maximum of five times per day. Again, it seems like another desperate attempt by Robinhood to keep hold of as much cash in their platform as possible. They obviously know they're generating such significant losses and need to try and generate some more interest income before they end up going bankrupt. And it's likely because, as Peter Schiff said, we're on the cusp of another financial crisis. Peter Schiff appeared on NTD News to talk about the bank bailout and the March Federal Reserve meeting. During the conversation, Peter explained that everybody is going to pay for these bailouts because they will ultimately devalue the dollar as inflation skyrockets. Jerome Powell previously said on his March FOMC meeting, the banking system is sound and resilient, but Peter has said that it's not sound at all, and he said it's a house of cards that's starting to collapse. And he said thanks to the mistakes the Fed has made since the 2008 crisis, we now have a much bigger bubble. He said these regulators are dismissing all the early signs of a major financial crisis, but make no mistake, we're on the cusp of one, and it's going to be much bigger than the last. And he said, so if we have high inflation, which we do right now, and a recession at the same time, more banks are going to fail. And we can see that even the major banks agree, because UBS is now planning to fire 36,000 employees after it completes the takeover of Credit Suisse. And for reference, Credit Suisse currently has less than 50,000 employees. So UBS is basically planning to lay off two-thirds of the Credit Suisse workforce in order to absorb the company. Again, it shows these major banks are still struggling and many more banks may be just about to collapse. As Al said in late 2000, it looked like the worst of the tech bubble implosion was behind us, but it wasn't. And he said in late 2007, it looked like the soft landing was upon us and that everything was fine, but obviously it wasn't. And he said in early 2023, we were talking about no landing at all, but it seems it's not going to end up that way. And he said it always looks like a soft landing just before a significant recession. You can also relate this to AMC as well, because in 2021, many hedge funds and short sellers were thinking that AMC squeeze was over. But just like the coming 2023 recession, they're soon going to find out the 2023 squeeze is upon them as well. Especially if Elon Musk forms this team of litigators to go after the short sellers, to go off the law firms, and even to go off the regulators. I think when someone lesser known like Roger Hamilton tries to form a couple of CEOs to fight against the short sellers in the SEC, because the fact he's lesser known it doesn't have quite the same impression as if it's Elon Musk forming that team. I think Adam Aaron, Ryan Cohen, and many other CEOs would absolutely stand behind Elon Musk in a heartbeat. 
add, because Elon Musk's reputation is greater and Elon Musk also has significant resources behind him. Guys, that's all we have for you today. What is your opinion about AMC stock? Get involved and let us know in the comments down below. Thank you for watching.